Anyway, so I um, learned this from my grandfather. Uh, when I was a little kid, um, for two years, I would stay with my grandparents when, during the summertime. My parents didn't want to pay for daycare, so we got a grandparent with dropping off there. I was looking through his closet one day, and I found, not this one, but I found this, this stick. And uh, I thought, man, that's mm -hmm. eight years old. This is my machine gun. And I, I play with it, and one day my grandfather came in, and he went ballistic. Do not touch my hand. What's wrong? You know, put this back in. Don't touch it. And, you know, of course, that lasted for like four seconds. As soon as he was gone the next day, man, I had my machine. I just made sure that I put it back up. Uh, and one day I left it out on the couch, forgot to put it back up. And again, he went nuts. And after a couple of times of doing this, he said, well, let me, let me show you some stuff. This is the stuff that my, my father showed me. It skipped my dad for a generation. Um, so he didn't, he didn't get into this at all. But I thought, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. And as I got older and got into martial arts, I started to see how this kind of played in to some of the other stuff that we do. Um, a lot of guys, well, if you, if you watch online, the guys fighting with shillelaghs, they'll stand like this, and they'll put their hands in front. And I think, man, that's my target right there. For the rest of this fight, those hands are what I'm going to be breaking. Uh, and my grandfather said that it, it's a cane. Before anything else, before it's a weapon, it's a cane. And so we want to use it like a cane. So a lot of our techniques start from right here. Either I'm coming back to defend, I'm getting up to strike, or from here, I'm coming this way. Um, but it, everything kind of starts here. I, I don't necessarily pick it up. He said, as soon as the tip comes off the ground, it's now a weapon. But I need to be able to get it off the ground without you guys knowing that I'm getting it off the ground. So we had three stances. Stance number one is kind of like a reverse triangle. Stance number two, you can do this, but, but nobody does. It's not a very good stance. So it's kind of a forward triangle. Uh, stance three is here. Stance four is like this. Stance five is at this angle. And then my grandfather used to stand like this. And whenever he did that, I thought, man, that, that's scary. So I thought, that's, that's, a, uh, that's an aggressive position when you stand just like this over here. Funny. Normally what I'll do is I'll stand here. And did you film before ever? Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry. You're right. <laughs> I see where you put it there. Good name. But, but everything kind of comes from here, and I need to be able to get this grip while my cane is on the ground without anybody noticing that that's what I'm doing. Now, if I've got a hook on my cane, it's, it's much easier. Now, for the shillelagh, they normally you've got a ball or a here on the end of it. But I like this hammer kind of a look because I can put my feet on it. And that gives me a lot of control that normally I would not get. So I kind of play with the cane back and forth a little bit. I try to look like you know, I'm just kind of hanging out talking. And as it goes back, that's when it kind of rolls into my fingers. And I can bring it back again. So this just looks natural. I do this a few times. My opponent doesn't realize, oh, these are fighters. And I've got some, some videos online of, of uh, I mean, fighting with this, you know, one of our gatherings, uh, and, and actually fighting with this, some, some other people came. And this works really well. You know, they're all here, like it's, it's a, a college student. And, and that's fine also, and we certainly do that. But most of my techniques will start from here on the ground. So the first thing that I want to work on, this is really easy, is just have an upward, it can be a strike under the chin, or it can be a defense, but I'm moving back in this position, I want to get out of wherever I am. So I'm moving back, and then I move back. So out, defend, and then back in. Because most people, if they've got a longer weapon, they're going to strike you from a longer range, and they're just going to stay there. But so that's, that's what I found, right? So out, after that defense, as they're just standing there watching themselves, I move back in. This is like a baseball bat. I'm just ratcheting that back off. And having, having this kind of little hook here on the end makes so much difference for me to hold on to it. I don't have to, to really get a tight grip. I can loosen that grip up a little bit as I'm coming right. And again, with canes like this, it's the exact same thing. All right, so, so let's do this. Uh, and then this this striking at me, I'll be here, here. Don't hit because we got a long day ahead of us. So just up, back. My leg moves back, and then it comes right back in. And what you can do with this, instead of coming back in this way, I'll come back on top. One, and then you do the exact same thing. Step yeah. backward, and come up. And when you come in, go top of the roll top. So I didn't roll top. So I can go back in. Oh, 
How do you like that stick? Nice. It, it it's got a nice. It's got a nice feel. A little weight I feel like it. I could crack a skull. With yeah. It. I love this. That's that's character. Yeah. Well, these are thorns. Yeah. That stick out. Nope. Nice. I got a block. I got a block at some point. All right, go ahead. Shorter sticks. Actually, I'm going to kind of hand things over to, to Eric. Um, Kurt, yes, sir. You've got other guys using them. Do I? Oh. Yeah. 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 Hey, how are you? Well, thanks, sir. Really. Hello, sir. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Yes, you as well. Are you all right? Yep, yeah. Now, now we're good. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good to see you. All right. Are you all right? Good. Awesome. So, one of the other things that we'll do, um, I, back in, back in the, uh, the 60s, we had really long surfboards. Right. And they're like nine feet long. 
And I had a cousin that was like one of the, the big surfers back in the time, Dean Doyle. And uh, he would he would walk his board. And if you're if you're surfing and you stand in the center of the board, you're gonna lose the wave. If you're if you're standing in the back of the board, a lot of times the, the wave would just go underneath you. If you're in the front, if you're in the front, as the wave comes in, it'll nose dive and you'll flip over the front. And so as you're surfing, you're constantly walking that board. Now today you don't do that, you get into one spot and that's where you stay because the board is so short. With a long board, you're walking that board. And it's kind of the same thing with a stick like this, with a long cane or a long stick, uh, you can walk that stick. So if I hit here, I can change my hands, or I can change my hands this way. This way I've got like a, a club, like a golf club, or a hammer. And that's why I had them design it with, or not design, but I said, look for one, I want a hammer on the end of it. Uh, so I've got a kind of a light end, it's a little bit faster, and I've got a heavy end if I change hands to really kind of knock myself through there. So I end up doing a lot of changes. And I roll my hand here, or I slide down and roll my hand. So I'm, I'm normally keeping contact with that weapon. If I start doing this kind of thing, I promise my opponent's going to knock it out of my hand. So I, I, if, I'm, if I'm working something long, I want to keep both hands on if I can. I don't want to put my hands in front, but a lot of times I'll put my hands way back here at the end, like this, and I'll end up using it just like, like it's not there. So a lot of times what I'll do from here is, so now I'm in my own See? <laughs> see how you see that? I know. So from here, one of the things I'll do is I'll, I, what I do with this is I call this my quick draw technique. If you ever use like a gun, you, take, you do it in several stages. When you first learn how to do it, you just get your hand off the gun. And then you get it out of the holster. And then out, and then up, and out, and high, and then push up. So you do this in stages. So my first stage from here is to put my hand up. Whenever I pop this up, I want to make sure it goes into my hand every single time. So I just do this over and over and over. Just get it in that hand, just get it in that hand. Once it's in that hand, I'm going to just jam through it. And this is kind of a surprise technique. You know, the, the guy doesn't necessarily know that, okay, the fight is on. I've, I've still got the tip on the ground. I put my hand out, look, I don't want to fight, you know, leave me alone, but my hand is in position. I roll it back. <clears throat> I snap it up, and I can come in, or I can come down. If I come down, I'm going to the chest plate. If I come up, I'm going to the solar plexus. Bam here, or move my weapon around, pop it in, and come down at the top. From here, jab, cross, hooks, uppercuts. I just have a stick in my hand. But I'm doing the exact same motion. This hand comes back to my face. This hand comes back to my face. This hand comes back to my face. And I'm working in this asterisk motion, this 12 points of a compass. Or you have now you've got 360 degrees. You can do that, but really it's just kind of those basic angles. Like Eric was talking about a second ago. I want to come in from the north. That's it. So here or here. So from this position, snap it up in your hand. And if you miss it, oh man, where is it? There it is. Just work this. Pop, and then step in. So I'm doing like a cross. Like that. So let's try it. Do we need more cases in general? If, uh, if you've got, got some, got some more. Parker. That's the 
magic stick. Candle stick. All right, have we got that? That's pretty easy, right? Okay. Last technique. Last technique, I'm going to walk my stick. And this is kind of one of the things that, uh, that I really try to develop. Because I want, I want to be able to use both ends of my stick. Or I want to be able to use the middle of my stick. I just don't want my hands in front because, again, I, I promise there will be a hit. One more time, please. So I'm going to do kind of the same way same thing to get my stick up into position, but then I'm going to roll my thumb here. So I still have contact the entire time. I just open my hand and roll it around to the other end and slide down. And now I have that, that golf club. And I'm going to go to the kneecap. So I, I'm used to coming here to the middle, up to the top part. And now from here, I'm going to change it and go to the kneecap. And I'm going to step sideways as I get that. So I'm not just swinging, but I'm getting my momentum to really go to the side. Got that? Be careful with the knees. They're a lot closer than you think that they are. I don't know how many times I've done this and caught somebody in your shin and being on accident. But, um, if you're not used to working with something, a stick that's maybe a little bit longer, just be careful. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Got it? Yes, sir. Try that. Good. You're up. All right. I'll do this soon. Okay. The nice thing is, a lot of this translates. Can you play a dial in the way? Stepping into it here instead of stepping this way. Think where your power is. Yeah. Alright, we got that? Those are pretty easy. You can snap the, the weapon up and stab. You can defend coming forehand or backhand. And you can switch hands and really put some power into that in the shot. And I think that a, a lot of, and, and you know, maybe you'll agree with me, a lot of guys that sit fight have like maybe three techniques they do. You know, they've got a, this, you know, forehand, backhand, just to kind of a hit and pull through. Uh, a lot of times they'll have like this little popping technique. Uh, but, you know, they, they don't have a lot of techniques they really rely on. They've got just a few. And it's the same with most martial arts systems. You look at, uh, Bill Wallace, how many techniques he got? Three. Yeah. Mike Tyson, how many techniques did he have? Two. You know, 
know, most judo guys, you know, they'll, they'll go through entire competition, their entire competitive life with maybe five techniques that you will from over over. So if you've got a few, just a few good stick techniques, I think, especially with the cane, because you've got that reach on there, you're, you're good to go in most situations. Is there, is there more, does it get more you know, technical? It, it does. Uh, there's a, a ton more that you can do, different footwork and put stuff in, but realistically, if you've got something that goes high, something that goes middle, and something that goes low, you've got a good defense and a good strike, that, that's good enough. Can I ask a question just sure. for context? I've never done any of this to fight before. When you're fighting, I know you fought a lot of this, uh, you played in the system or whatever it was, but you're, do you have equipment on, or are you just Absolutely getting not. two sticks and <laughs> whacking the heck out of each other? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. It's a great I'm question. Sure it's funny we were talking about it this morning. When we started, this is like pre angry in the Um This is like in the 70s, you know. So, dude. Blood and guts. I don't, yeah, I don't want to age myself, but, you know, before this, I'll believe it or not. There was a lot of equipment. You had Kendo masks back then. When you see the old James Bond movies and stuff like that. And that was it. And so we came up, uh, this is pre-Dog Brother era. <clears throat> um, I went to Columbia University in New York, and where we worked out was at the very bowels of the earth of this university, the gym, the gymnasium they had there. And it happened to be the same place where they did fencing. And so there were these old fencing masks just on, you know, on the walls, just kind of hung up there. And what the, and what the fencing team would do, you know, they would target practice, basically what it was. So uh, me and, some of the guys I'm looking at that says, you know, I think we can use this. So I had to talk to the fencing coach, say, hey, you mind if we use these for helmets, <clears throat> for just headgear? And the main thing was, because we had sticks, sticks were like this, or, I mean, canes were fine too. We would have done anything really with it. But, <clears throat> so we just put in the fencing mask, and it's basically, and we were joking about it this morning, it was like a screen door over your head. The idea being that, didn't mind getting hit in the face or the jaw, just the eyes were the main thing. To make sure your eyes, because you know, we had to go work or to school, something like that the next day, you got to be functional. And as far as the hand gear is concerned, you either had hockey gloves, which in my opinion just were too cumbersome, you had lacrosse gloves, because back east lacrosse is big, and you had that, um, or some faction thereof. Oh, yeah, yeah, and these, uh, yeah, and then, yeah, this is uh, one latest iteration. To me, this is a little on the heavy side, but if I were starting somebody out, if you're, if you're starting somebody for the first time to train, I mean, I'll warn you, stick fighting fighting is a dojo killer, All right? I'm just saying, don't make your living off. But it's a great attraction because people are like, whoa. The first time we put in a full contact thing was in New York at Great Gorge at the, back then, the Playboy Club, believe it or not. And uh, that talk about dating yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was great watching those girls fight with sticks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had, you know, they, they announced, okay, there's going to be a full contact stick fighting thing, and ring number, you know how they have mats and rings and things, so ring number five or two, whatever it was. So we went out there, and just the headgear and this, and much, it was much lighter than that, I think what it was. And we started going at it. And people were like, I mean, you could see everyone just kind of wave back and then like, whoa, <laughs> like that. And it was, you know, it, so it was a big hit. Right. It's no pun intended. And um, so the gear that we just, we settled on was as light as possible, mainly for a couple of reasons. One is, um, my, in my philosophy was, you got to have urgency. If you're too protected, what happens is, a lot of people, if they wear these things that I, I consider a diving bell and on your head, you're just going to stand there. It's going to be rock and rock and roll, it's just like this. And, that's, and no there's fear. no urgency. There's no, you're not motivated to move. You're motivated what you are because the way the scoring used to go, they, one guy would be doing this, the other guy would be doing this, and what was that? Yeah, that's not fighting. So we, uh, you know, in the process, so I basically I just said, okay, minimum, minimal armor. Everything goes, just watch yourself. You know, that, and that's kind of what fighting is about. And so when we did, so as far as protection is concerned, it was minimal. Now, when you first start somebody doing this stuff, I do not recommend doing that. Because unless they are true believers, 
fanatical, and you, you know, you know the students. You know, some people are just like, I want to kill. Like, Ugh, I think I want you to chill. <laughs> you know? um, you want to ease them in. Now, one thing I've noticed when we did knife fighting, and everybody's done some knife fighting before, or whatever this is, and I can attest because I have a daughter, is women, once you get past a little speed bump, it's okay to hit, they're good. And it's, a knife is a big equalizer. And if you get proficient at it, it doesn't matter, size, gender, whatever it is, you're gonna be able to hold off three, four, five people, at least long enough so if you have buddies or you know support, or an exit, you can get out. And so to answer your question as far as protection, minimalize it. Uh, in the very beginning, do something softer. Don't go in with a big stick uh, like that. Uh, I would recommend knife fighting first. And we, you know, Kurt and I, we use the metal aluminum ones. They got a little bit of a point. I don't like the rubber ones because it's not realistic. I mean, rubber ones, you do this and go like that. You don't feel anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like this. Right. Perfect. That's exactly. So, yeah, it won't kill you. It will get your attention. That's the idea. And so when I'm when you're fighting like that, you're going to thrust. And especially, in, it's uh, it keeps everyone honest at the same time. Uh, strikes the head. Same thing. The fencing mask. You know, you'd think to protect you. Really, if you get hit, if you're wearing a fencing mask like this or something like this is nice and happy. Boom, it's like being kicked with a bat in your head. So you want to move. But the idea is you respect range. A lot of people, they fight with something that doesn't threaten them. They'll get right here and just start exchanging blows. And that's, that's bullshit. Sorry, my friend, but that's the way it works. Anyway, so did I, I hope I no, that, no, that answered it really well. I just wasn't exactly sure if you had headgear and handgear and stuff like that, and you were going at it. And, cause, yeah, I well, it's going to be what, they, what you can get. Right. Like I, said, I, I get as light as possible. The other thing is, when we because the fencing masks, they're kind of old. The ones I got on eBay, <laughs> having bit a few. Uh, when you get to the ground, and pretty much even stick fights, they'll go to the ground. Some people, particularly in the world of jiu-jitsu right now, everybody tries to go to the ground because that's that's the game that everybody plays. Thing is, when you are you know, what MMA kind of changed was that, yeah, you can't, you can go to the ground, you better protect your face. You do things in jiu-jitsu you would never do in MMA. I mean, you know, you would not let the guy, put the guy in your guard, and he's just on top way because that, that changes things a lot. So if you're on, even in side control, okay, there are counters to the guy being on top, but if the guy's wailing like this, a lot of those counters are going out the window. And same thing with uh, what we found with sticks. When we go to the ground, you had to, um, I mean, obviously, hopefully you have your weapon. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people say they'll jettison the weapon and go for it. Uh, I, I don't agree with that completely, but what I found that it, if the guy had a fencing mask on and you don't have gloves on, it's like a cheese grater on your knuckles. So that's why I put on it's something, not heavy though, because you want, you know, you want to um, respect the weapon. You want to be because if, if you and I just square up for whatever reason, like you owe me money from the Super Bowl bet or something like that, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's a duel at that point, you're not going to be, oh, let me get my weapon, let me get my head there. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be a way this. And I might point out, too, that what we do, when you saw a lot of Dog Brothers and stuff like that, those are duels, duels, one on one. And what my instructor, and same with the Kurtz, we had the same instructor for a while. Uh, Leo, he's straight from uh, Negros, uh, the island of Negros in the Philippines. He said, it's never one on one. It's three on five, eight on four, a village versus a village. Those are what those fights are about. He says, and, and his fighting philosophy was that when you are fighting and you're engaging in person, because they're doing this to machetes, or whatever farm gear they have at the time. Now, when you're fighting, it's not like there's a referee to step in or you're going to tap out it. Like, no, it's it's for real. So what you do, you finish, you meet him, you push him off, bam, you've got the back of your, the guy working on your buddy there. You know, take him out and then go back. So there's a lot of switching back and forth. And that's that was his philosophy. All right. But, you know, you don't have a lot of his fighting villages <laughs> in the States. <laughs> but... The idea was, you know, you've got to keep your head on a swivel while you're doing it. Very much like if you play football and your lineman 
they say when you're coming back, you're, if you're blocking, you got to keep your head still. Okay, he's getting through, he's getting through, i got to push him off. Same thing. So you got to keep your head up and looking around. Now, when we fight, um, most of the fighting would start, for example, you can do this with your cane. We start out here and we just flick sticks. I mean, this is the protocol that we're using. Boom, like that, and forth, and then you're on. And from the most most times, what you're going to be trying to do, obviously, is sh uh, hit and punch and stuff like that. And not punch, but just hit and strike. Um, if you have a jiu-jitsu base, which is awesome, your your instinct is going to be want to get here and then eventually down on the ground. The problem is you got to get through that. And so when uh, I met the uh, Machados and Carlos and all that, the <laughs> first time Carlos came. He was watching some of our fights, and people were, you know, we were amateurs at that point in terms when it came to the, the, the ground. But I did know that there were some people, like, you know, a rugby player or a football player, you know, they're going to be coming out of here, they're going to be coming in and trying to crash because that's, you know, that's what they know. And if they're real big and strong, and they look at the real estate, I'm not strong, I'm not strong, I'm not strong, I'm not strong, but they'll say, oh, I can take this guy, I can take like this, trust the ground, everything's gone. Well, in a larger picture, yes, that's true. If I'm uh, weighing 40 pounds, I have maybe a little bit of wrestling skill or maybe a little bit of a violent streak in me, I'll get you to the ground and neutralize it, which is true. But if I come in, and most guys, if they're in me, they're going to be coming in like this, right? And they're going to be trying to block. So what we emphasize, I emphasize a lot in Dog Brother Fighting, is you've got to have power. If you don't have power, if, if, if I don't have, if my punch is going to be like that, you're going to, you're going to dictate the fight. I mean, it's, I'm not, it's not over yet, but it's, the path is clear, I'm not going to be over. So if I have to worry about him closing, I got to make sure he pays. And the way most people, let's just say, typically, empty hand, for example, he's coming in, typically they're going to block this or something with the head. If I catch you clear on top of the head like this, it'll probably, have you ever been hit in the head with a stick? Let me tell you what that's like. If you've ever been hit in the head with a stick, it's not like a kick or a punch. What it, and, and there are different variations of this, but in particular, if it's like, boom, boom, something like that, and I mean, your head is hard. You know, it's pretty hard. That's why in the Philippines, Leo, he said, if you're bare knuckle, don't hit the head, slap the head. Because if you hit the head, you're not going to hit it. It's got made it hard. You know, harder for men probably than for women, but that's no story. Mm -hmm. So, he said if you hit your, it's not a punch or a kick. What it does, you'll have this like reset moment. Like, <laughs> and it's like someone cut the strings of a puppet. And you don't black out, but it's like, wow, why is it spinning? Next thing you know, you're like, boom. And if this, it may last two, three seconds, but when you start coming out of it, your whole body feels like it's, the blood has led it. Everything is hidden. And it just takes a minute to just like even sit up. And usually, you know, they pull you off to the side, okay, next. And that's what it feels like to get hit. Now getting hit in the body when you're striking, here, here, these are, you know, obviously you can feel it, but it's not a fight ending shot. But if you've never been hit with a stick before, and this is something, again, let's see. be careful when you teach this to your students. The diehard ones will love it. The medium ones will be like, ooh. And the, the not so medium ones are going to be, I don't want to do this. It's painful. Then you get anywhere here, you know, like even in the quads, and you have your biggest muscle groups here, <clears throat> I mean, it's ran like that on the, on, the, on the quad. If you've never been hit, it just stops you. For a second, like that. And what's weird, I we uh, the, where I trained down in uh, Houston, uh, it's mostly an MMA group. So you have these young testosterone studs between 20 and 30, and they're like, ah, and they know that I do stick fighting. And I say, well, and we want to do so. No, you don't want to do stick fighting. Do you do your MMA first because I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. Like, you ruined his career, you know. And so, but I will let you know what it feels like. It's, so on everyone's birthday, the tradition is now I get to hit him with a quad. <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, you hit him like this, okay, do it here. And you have this, this one kid, he was like 19, 20, and he's like, I can take it. I said, I know you can take it. 
That's not the issue. The issue is how it affects you. And so you just you know, whack it. It's not like it's like maybe a 20, 30, maybe a 40 percent shot of the leg. And you can just see it like resonate through the body. For like, mm, okay. May I see an example of the swing that you're doing when you're doing that? I guess yeah, sure. No, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Dr. Punk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not my birthday. No, I'm you're right. <laughs> okay. But that's <clears throat> but the but the when you get hit with something like this, and it's not you know here like this. When we're in close to, you know, you're going to be ponying and doing this sort of stuff as well. Now one thing that since a lot of us are going to have a ground background and you want to close, you want to be aware of a few things, particularly the way people, you know, if you square up, don't think of this for a second. So if we square off, typically it's going to be after we, you know, that happens. It's typically, I will lead with the stick. So it's like you lead with your left, if you're, if you're righty. If I have the stick, I'm usually leading with the stick. Like so. Very rarely will, I mean, you will switch once in a while, but it's usually it's a setup for some something, whether it's a close or something else. So when you're moving around, it's just in the cool situation. Okay. By stick moving around like so, looking for his behavior. Now if he's if he what I, does what I call a lock like lockout, which means not moving his stick for two, three, four, five seconds, ten seconds, whatever the time period is, I know where that hand's gonna be probably two or three, four seconds from now. So if we're like this, my idea would be here and down the hand like that. And that's, that'd be a backhanded. If he was left-handed, it'd be on that side. But if you are trying to close, which is what most of us will want to do in this scenario, you have to get past this. And if the guy's any good, he's kind of sets you up. So, and sometimes people will block out, they'll have they'll, some styles to do this. The idea being that here, here, here. I'm not a big fan of that. I like keeping it moving around. This random is a fly, I call it like that. So if I'm moving around, it's hard for you to tell where my stick is. And we kind of coined the phrase, snaky stick, like this, here, like this. So if I'm trying to set them up, here, like this. It looks like I'm into one thing, but he falls. And so, so like I said, everything's target. Feet are a great target. If you ever find yourself on your back, so if you go on your back for a second, like say you trip or you get knocked down or you're just like, and you're this guy, your knee, they do this, go for the feet. I guarantee you he'll pull them back. So and if you are on the back, find a way to get up. Don't stick your feet Because if I'm here, first I'm going to be whacking this here. I'm going to be circling towards your head the whole time. And as I'm doing this, I know you have to follow. So I'm going to wham, 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 like that. And then, yeah, get up. And when you get up, you want to protect yourself. Because you'll see a lot of some of the films that we have. I would go down some leg like so. Now, you have about a 30% chance, 3 of 10, not bad, really, if you think about it. But you come down like so, if you miss, which all right, odds are you're going to miss. Don't sit here and admire yourself. It looks cool, but if he's here too long, he's going to go bonk. Or even if I hit you in the water, yeah, you're not sure. dead, you're going to whack him in the head, as you should. I mean, I deserve it. Yeah. So when you come through this thing like this, there, I'm trying to hit you right here. If I hit the sciatica right behind the knee, what's going to happen is his knee will be this And he'll fall over like the two legs stool. So, but I, you know, it's not an easy target. So I had you like that there. I miss for whatever reason. So as soon as I come out, I can come out and cover myself. So when you come down, it's boom and out, like that. When we come out, boom, the back end, the same back end that the Kurt showed you. If you have one of those sticks, you'll take the cost head off. So if you have one of these, that works too. Does anybody here work in construction? For work on job sites, but you've seen them. You've yes, done remodeling and stuff. Yes, Everything's a weapon. Everything's a weapon. The tools, hammer, hammer, rebar, two by fours. Everything's a weapon. This is just an analog mm -hmm. for anything you can pick up. A rolled up newspaper. Believe it or not, can be daunting if you roll it up tight and swing it. Up. So when you come down here. 
get out. Where you cannot protect yourself because his shot is typically, he might miss, his next shot is going to come like that. Right over the top, just like Kurt was describing. And I'm coming as hard as I can towards him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's where I'm, I'm just remembering this. Like, okay. <laughs> Coming right over the top of the head like so. And if you get hit straight down like here, you'll go in. You won't lose consciousness, but all systems will be offline for three, four, five seconds, which is a lifetime sure. in fighting. So, one, uh, one kind of move. Do we have time for a... We've got 15 minutes or so. Oh, okay. So get them rocking. Let me show you this one kind of sequence of moves, how to close and finish with a couple things. You might have heard Carlos talk to me about this. One of the things they loved, they loved two things. Carlos loved this move, but he also loved what we call the fang. And the fang, volunteer? Yes, sir. Call and call. Yes, sir. And the fang is basically, it's close. And, you know, we have more of you get to your controlling, back control, uh, we're going to get The fang is the butt. Oh, when you're teaching, people with sticks the first time, I recommend, have them get a stick, put their non-dominating end at the very bottom so that the edge is parallel to their leading edge here, and then roll it in to the dominant. And that'll give them, this is the beginning. Later on, as they get a little bit more advanced, a little more advanced, down about a finger length. You don't want, you don't want this. You don't want that. You don't want that, because it's too small. You want something, enough of an end here, so that, and think about it this way. If I'm in this close, can I puncture him? And, one, number two, is it long enough for what I call the fang? And the fang is this. You come in, let's say we're going back and forth, and I come in, boom, I'm getting close. Now, if I'm, usually when you close, you're not doing the limbo, like that. When I close, I'm coming in like that. And I'm blocking, and I, I'm not going to get this, but I'm just going to smother for just, all I need is a second. Yes, sir. Boom, this. I might come in, I'm boom, like a, in here like that. And this is not a put away shot, it's a <clears throat> shot. And I'm trying, you know, you may need it in bed, but you'll <clears throat> for a second. And that's what I want. Just bam. And now, if you don't do anything, I might do it a few more times until that hand kicks into play. Well, no, you'll, be, you'll be trying to stop this. Oh, oh yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You'll be grabbing it, so they got, or even the stick, even just to keep yes, it. And I'm kind of counting on the oomph. Yes, so if I get one in, I'll see this coming. I get it out. As I come across, I'm, I'm swinging around like this. So I'm going to do yes, a sir. headlock. Yes, so my headlock is boom, and I'm swinging, and, and if you do throws, yes, sir. that's the same thing you would do. Normally, you would do something like that. Yes, sir. But in this case, I don't want to go to the ground necessarily. Grab it, spin, grab this right in the throat. Oh, nice. And then you keep it tight. Yes, and this, if, Turn I, around. If, I, if I have it, I'll clip this. If I don't have it, I don't care. Because I got this. When you get this on the throat. Turn around that? so that everybody over there can see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes.